friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian and today we are doing a true crime deep dive into Robert Berdella and how he got the nickname of the Kansas City Butcher. This serial killer reminds me so much of Jeffrey Dahmer and surprisingly this actually took place a few years before the Dahmer case was public. I'll be doing my makeup at the same time so please stick around, follow along, and let's get started. Robert Berdella was born January 31st, 1949 in Ohio. He was the first of two boys. He and his family were devout Roman Catholics and would often attend mass together. He and his brother also attended religious schooling growing up. It's said that Robert was very introverted. He had a speech impediment and wore very thick glasses from the age of five years old because he was very nearsighted. Um, however, his brother was very outgoing and his father really favored Robert's brother due to this. And Robert didn't really get the attention that he would have liked to have from his father growing up. It's also said that Robert's father would often beat them as punishment with leather belts. By his mid to late teens, it's said that Robert became very rude with people and he had very low self-confidence and he was especially really degrading towards women. On Christmas Day of 1965, Robert's family went to visit family where his father began having chest pain and had a heart attack at the age of 39. Robert then drove himself home and when he arrived home that day, he was told that his father had passed away from a heart attack. This then turned Berdella to read extensively about many faiths, but then would become very cynical, cynical about all religions in general. In 1965, Berdella saw the film adaptation of the John Fowles novel called The Collector. The plot of the film revolves around a disturbed man who stalks and then abducts a young woman who he finds attractive. He holds her captive in this windowless stone basement and viewing her as a little more than an attractive specimen. After several weeks, the woman dies of a contracted illness. Berdella said that this movie made a lasting impression on him and would act as a muse to his future killings. Shortly after the death of his father, his mother then remarried. Berdella would begin to resent his mother and see it as a betrayal against his father. This caused him to become even more withdrawn and isolated himself even more than he already was. He did, however, obtain pen pals in different countries, such as Vietnam and Burma. His pen pal would send him stamps and photos to which he developed an avid interest in antiques and primitive arts. And this would later help him in his future antiquing business. In the summer of 1967, Berdella graduated high school at the top of his class. It's said that he was a very good student and was in a lot of advanced classes. He then decided to move to Kansas City from Ohio to further his education in the arts. He went to attend the Kansas City Art Institute with the hopes of becoming a professor. During his first year at the Kansas City Art Institute, Berdella was considered an attentive and talented student, although by his second year, he became vocally anti-authoritarian um, and he got into drugs and alcohol. He became involved with a clique of students and began selling drugs for a profit. During this time, he engaged in two separate acts of animal torture, one of which he decapitated a duck and cooked it, and the second is um, when he tranquilized a dog. At the age of 19, Berdella was arrested for trying to sell methamphetamines to a police officer. He was then released after posting a $3,000 bond. In comparison to 2023, it is equivalent to about $23,000. He would later plead guilty to the offense and was handed a five-year suspended sentence. Unfortunately, one month after this arrest, Berdella and two other students were arrested for possession of marijuana and LSD. On this occasion, Berdella could not post bond and he spent five days in jail, although the charges against him and the other students would be dropped due to lack of evidence. In 1969, Berdella had voluntarily withdrew from the Art Institute after receiving harsh criticism from his administrators for killing and cooking a duck for the sake of art. He literally blamed these two cases of animal torture on artwork and he was upset because he was being criticized for this which just goes to show how crappy of a human being this man was. After dropping out of school, he then bought a home in Kansas City and decided to stay in the area. Um, and by this time, he had been openly gay for several years. He began spending most of his time with male prostitutes, drug addicts, and petty criminals. 
He would typically befriend these individuals and claim that he was trying to help them break their addiction. He would tell his neighbors that he felt like he was a foster parent to these men. His neighbors said that he was friendly most of the time, but he would leave his yard unkept and he would act really haughty and better than all of them. Beginning in the 1970s, Berdella worked for the South Hyde Park Crime Prevention and Neighborhood Association, becoming and he became their chairman in the early 1980s and encouraged neighborhood watch patrols. This seems to be kind of a common theme with serial killers that I've talked about recently. They just like to be involved and pretend like they're against crime while what they're doing is the most heinous thing you can imagine. In 1982, Bordella opened a booth at Westport Market in Kansas City where he sold primitive art and jewelry as well as antiques. At his work, he became acquainted with a fellow merchant named Paul Howell. He was then introduced to his younger son, Jerry Howell. Jerry and his friends would often make fun of Berdella because of his overt homosexuality. However, he would tell Berdella that he occasionally would earn money as a male prostitute. Berdella would offer to drive Jerry to a party and instead of driving him to this party, he gave him tranquilizers and drove him to his house where he became unconscious. Jerry Howell, who was 19 years old at the time, believed to have been killed on July 5th, 1984. Um, where he was injected with heavy tranquilizers and bound to the bed. Jerry was restrained, tortured, and raped with foreign objects for approximately 28 hours. Once dead, Berdella claims that he attempted to perform CPR, but once unsuccessful, Berdella then drug the body to the basement where it was suspended over a large cooking pot and incisions were made in order to drain the corpse. After it had drained overnight, Berdella then dismembered the body and wrapped it up in paper and put it in the trash for the city to pick up that day. Um, unfortunately, the city then picked up the garbage and disposed of the body in the city landfill. When Berdella was questioned about Jerry, Berdella just said that he had driven him to the party as he had promised, but he hadn't heard from him since. In April of 1985, a 20-year-old Robert Sheldon arrived at Berdella's door to ask if he could stay at his house for a short period. Although Sheldon had paid Berdella rent, Berdella described him as an inconvenience. And on April 12th, he drugged Sheldon with sedatives and held him captive in a second-story bedroom for three days. Berdella performed torture acts on him, such as swabbing drain cleaner in his left eye and inserted needles underneath his fingertips. Sheldon was bound with piano wires and caulk was inserted into his ears. And this was to reduce his sense of vision and hearing. A roofer then arrived at Berdella's home on April 15th to do some scheduled work, which led Berdella to suffocate Sheldon sooner than he wanted to. Sheldon was later dissected in the third story bedroom. In June of 1986, Berdella befriended a man named Mark Wallace. Once he invited Mark Wallace into his home, um, it's said that Mark became a little nervous and he actually volunteered to be injected with these tranquilizers because he was told that it would calm him down. Unfortunately for him, 30 minutes later, Berdella had tied Wallace up and held him captive. Once again, in the second story bedroom where Sheldon was also held, he endured almost a whole day of torture and captivity. Alligator clips were then placed on Wallace's nibbles and an electric shock was sent into his body. This put him into a state of unconsciousness. And while he was unconscious, Berdella began experimenting with hypodermic needles and placed them in various body parts um, to see what would happen when he used electric shock. One hour into this torture, Wallace passed away and the disposal method of the body is still unknown. September 26th of 1985, another acquaintance of Berdella asked if they could stay at his place for a short time just to get back up on their feet, um, as they have heard that he was somewhat of a foster parent to other people that were in need. So he was trusted in this aspect from a lot of people. James Ferris then moved in with Berdella and was drugged by Berdella crushing tranquilizers into his food. Ferris was tortured for 27 hours by the same means of electric shock. However, this time it was applied to his genitals and he used 7,700 volts of electricity. He then used hypodermic needles to various parts of his body as well. Berdella would journal his activities and notes on what each effect had on each victim. Ferris died as a result, and it is unknown what became of his body. A man named Todd Stoops, who was a 27-year-old male, had previously lived with Berdella with his wife, and it's said that at one point Berdella had met up with Todd or saw him like in a local park. 
and offered to go out and catch up and get lunch for him. During this time, Todd had expressed that he was wanting $13 to buy drugs. And of course, Berdella took advantage of this and offered him the money in exchange for sexual acts. So Todd agreed and went home with Berdella. Berdella would say that Todd was the first victim that he was actually attracted to and would keep him for over two weeks to torture him. He passed away on July 1st, 1986, and it was determined that it was due to septic shock from a sexual assault due to Berdella. In the spring of 1987, Larry Pearson met Berdella because he was a customer at his Westport shop. Pearson then moved to Berdella's house and was paying rent by doing odds and ends around the house for him. Berdella states that he did not intentionally intend to capture Pearson, but began to form a plan after having to bail Pearson out of jail, and Pearson became somewhat of an inconvenience to him. So instead of kicking him out, he just killed him. Berdella injected him with a tranquilizer and then carried him to the basement and bound him and injected drain cleaner into his larynx to keep him from screaming. Berdella stated that Pearson was by far the most cooperative of his victims. Um, it's noted that Pearson trained himself to sleep without moving so he could avoid various torture throughout the day. He was held captive and tortured for over six weeks until Pearson finally had enough and while being forced to perform oral sex on Berdella, he bit very deep into his genitals. After this, Berdella became very angry and took a tree branch and beat him and bludgeoned him to death. After that, he then suffocated him with a plastic bag until he was no longer breathing. After Pearson had passed away, Berdella then drove himself to the hospital to be treated for his injuries. Pearson's body was later found dismembered in the basement and his head was initially stored in a plastic bag inside Berdella's freezer, but then he placed his head in the backyard. On March 29, 1988, a 22-year-old male prostitute named Christopher Bryson met Pearson and was lured into his home with the promise of sex and then was knocked unconscious with a iron bar. Bryson was bound to Berdella's bed and was abused and tortured. He later gained the trust of Berdella and convinced him to release one of his, hand, his bonds on his hand. After Berdella left for work, Bryson noticed a pack of matches that were nearby the bed and he reached over and was able to light a match and release the rest of his bonds by burning in them. He was kept in the second story bedroom as previous victims were and after his bonds were released, he jumped out of the window from the second story and luckily for him across the road, there was a Kansas City police officer and he ran to him to get help and that Kansas City police officer then alerted Kansas City Police Department. When police arrived to Berdella's home later that evening, Berdella refused to allow them to search his home and they ended up actually arresting him during that time for um, the kidnapping of Bryson. Soon after, detectives obtained a search warrant, and when they got to Berdella's home, they went straight to the second bedroom where Bryson stated that he was being kept and tortured, and they were not prepared for what they found. When they got there, they found the burnt ropes attached to the bed still, and the posts on the bed were very worn down as if multiple people had tried escaping for extended amounts of time. They also found a long iron pipe that Bryson said that he was knocked out with, and they found various rope bondages and leather bondages. They also found an electrical transformer that had wires leading to the bed where he would electrocute his victims. In the backyard, investigators uncovered two human skulls. One of them had just recently been decomposing, and the other one was completely decomposed. In the hallway, they found various human vertebrae that had scarring from hacksaws. They also found a chainsaw and various hacksaws and a miter saw in the basement that had human hair, human blood, and human flesh on them. In addition to this, they found a lot of envelopes in the house containing human teeth. They found various needles, narcotics, and stenographer pads that included the logs of his torture, um, detailing all of the torture that he used on his victims. They found 344 Polaroid photos of his victims that were both of them when they were alive and dead. In the photos, they, they also saw another person that didn't show their face, so they forced Berdella later to take several photos naked so they can compare his photos to the person that was in these Polaroids. Berdella refused to comply with the detectives without a lawyer, and when he did get a lawyer, he 
had his lawyer threaten to sue the Kansas City Police Department for harassment until they stopped investigating him. Originally, Bradello was formally charged with one count of felonious restraint, one count of assault, and seven counts of forcible sodomy. He was held in custody at the Jackson County Jail in lieu of a $500,000 bail, which in today's money would be over a million dollars. In late April, dental x-rays confirmed the skull in his yard and identified it as none other than Robert Sheldon, as well as Larry Peterson. Shortly after that, um, they released a couple of the photographs to the social media and two men anonymously informed the KCPD that they believe the young man in one of the photos was Mark Wallace. And then Mark Wallace's sister stated that he had been missing since 1985. He was first indicted in July for the murder of Larry Pearson and pleaded guilty and confessed under oath to Pearson's death. He stated he placed the plastic bag over his head and tied it with rope and then allowed him to suffocate. He was, he was sentenced to life without parole. He then earned a further life term for one charge of forc forcible sodomy against Bryson and a couple of the assault charges against him for Bryson were dropped due to a plea bargain. He received another seven years pertaining to one count of felonious restraint against Bryson. He pleaded not guilty originally to the other five murder charges, but he eventually conducted a plea bargain and confessed in graphic details to whom he had killed and what he had done with their bodies. Prosecution in return did not seek the death penalty. He waived his rights to be tried for the murder, understanding that he would be convicted for one first degree murder of Robert Sheldon and four counts of second degree murder for his other victims. He received five concurrent life sentences. In prison, he would write letters to the local minister that the prison officials knew of his heart condition and that he was suffering from high blood pressure and they were refusing to give him his heart medication. And then finally, on October 8th of 1992, he was complaining of severe heart pains to the prison officials. They then took him to the prison infirmary where they said that he was having unstable angina, which is severe heart pain that was not relieved over a certain amount of time. And they called an ambulance, which took him to a hospital in Columbia, Missouri, where they pronounced him dead of a heart attack at the age of 43. According to reports, he had been diagnosed with depressive personality disorder and also a sexual status disorder. I guess that is a, a thing. Um, he gained excitement from humiliation, pain, and torture, to which he subjected all of his victims. Later on, his home was purchased for an undisclosed amount and was thankfully demolished. And that, my friends, is the story of Robert Berdella and how he got the nickname of the Kansas City Butcher. If you enjoyed this true crime story and you are looking forward to more every week, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you would like to listen to next time. And if you want to hear another video next week, just hit the subscribe button and follow along. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day and take care. Stay safe.